Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Dolphin in the solo kingfish trip right there. That mutton snapper right there, baby. Typically, most ballyhoo are hooked with a single hook. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to do your own DIY at home double hook tandem setup trolling ballyhoo. You're not going to have to go to the bait store anymore to buy those double hooked ballyhoo. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. When it comes to Ballyhoo, you have your choice. Choice number one is you go to the bait shop and you buy fresh or frozen Ballyhoo. Will usually cost you about between $10 and $12 for six Ballyhoo. Or you can go out and catch your own. Ballyhoo are fairly easy to catch. To catch Ballyhoo, you simply anchor your boat up on the reef, make sure there is current. After you've anchored up, drop in a bag of chum. It should take all of about maybe 10 or 15 minutes and you will see ballyhoo starting to show up behind your boat. Once they are eating fairly good, you have your choice. You can catch them one at a time, which is not very effective, or you can do what I like to do, which is toss your cast net once, twice, and you should have enough to keep alive and fish for the rest of the day, or put them on ice, chill them down, and rig them. In order to rig a ballyhoo properly, you're gonna to need to start out with a few items. You're gonna need a cutting tool, a needle with an open end eye. You will need about 12 inches of tie wrap wire, haywire twist tool, two 8 hooks. These are from the company Mustad. You can use whichever manufacturer you would like two to three feet of wire leader. This particular wire leader is from the company Malin. It is number four, 40 pound test wire leader. You will also need a knife. Finally, you'll need a ballyhoo. The first thing we need to do is we need to make these hooks a double hook tandem setup. What we do is we come to the eye of one hook and we'll open up that eye. Using your cutting tool, you place the cutting edge right there where the eye meets the shank. You press down, and it'll form a space in the eye of your hook. You take your second hook, you feed it in backwards, and there you have hooked the two hooks together. Now we will close back the eye of the hook with the back end of the cutting tool. Pinch it closed, and there you have it. The next step is to attach our wire leader to the hooks using a haywire twist. So we will pass the wire through the eye. Using the primary side of the haywire twist tool, which is the solid side, you put the wire through there and you leave about an inch of tag or so hanging out. And we'll form a loop where it hooks to the hooks, where it loops through the hooks. Run your wire down the channel of the haywire twist tool, which is the secondary side. And you form a loop and then you start twisting. I'm going to give about eight or nine twists. That way I form a good knot with the wire leader. Then I will back out the hay wire twist tool. Now I will take my tag end. I'll form a 90 degree angle where my twists end. Now I'm going to do barrel wraps. 
We'll give it about eight or nine barrel wraps. Make sure that they're nice and tightly packed together. Now we've got our barrel wraps. It's time to snap off the tag end by simply bending it back and forth. And there we have a solid haywire twist on light wire. The next thing we're going to do is we will go to the opposite end of the wire leader. And we are going to take a small piece of it, an end of it, and make a kink. Now that we've got our hooks set up and tied on, it's time to prep the ballyhoo. The first thing you need to do when prepping a ballyhoo is we need to get rid of his beak. We don't want the whole beak. So with my cutting tool, come under here, I look where his chin is about ending, and I snip that off. You don't wanna get rid of the entire beak. You wanna leave some there because that's where we're gonna wrap around and force his mouth to stay, to stay shut. That way it doesn't open and gather water and make the bait spin. The next thing we need to do is we need to empty his digestive tract. So if you start pushing right behind the pectoral fin, you will feel a pop. And you will see all of it starting to come out the back end of your fish. We need to get everything out. And there, his digestive tract has been emptied. Now what you want to do is in different places, you want to loosen up his spine. You'll feel his spine give as you wiggle him around so that he can swim freely in the water, again, without spinning. Now we have the digestive tract cleared out and we have our fish that is loosened up. We're ready to insert our hooks. Now this is where it can get tricky. This is the part that nobody ever understands really how it's done by professionals. This is the easiest way that I've known to do this. What you need to do is right where the anus is, is where your first hook is going to come out. So you line this up on your fish. We are going to need to take our knife and make an incision where this second hook will come out. And we will go backwards a little bit, that way we can feed the first hook into it. If our hook ends there, we will make a little incision here. And we will go up into his em the empty cavity and we will cut a little less than halfway back into the hook. So, this is the incision that we have made. Right here. What we are going to do is we are going to take our hook. We are going to feed it the first hook. We are going to feed it backwards into the fish. And we are going to slowly work it until it comes out of the anal cavity, which is right here. There we go. The hook is coming out. Perfect. Now what we need to do is we will take this second hook and feed it all the way up to the eye, just like this. Now we are going to take the needle with the open eye end. You're going to feed it into his mouth. Get it down through his esophagus and work it until it comes out the incision. Here is our needle. It has come out the incision right where our other hooks come. Now we will take the kink that we made on our wire leader. We will hook the kink onto the needle and we'll pull that back through 
until it comes out of his mouth. And there is our wire leader fed through his mouth. Now, you slowly pull it through. You push your hooks back so that you don't kink. And you slowly pull it through until your wire leader straightens itself out. Be sure to not snag it on the fish's the opening of the incision as to make it any bigger. Feed the eye of the hook through there. And then you slowly feed your second hook back up into your fish. And that is how you get the double hook set up the same way on a bally hook. The next thing we need to do is we need to sew his mouth shut so that he won't gather water and spin in the water. So you take the sharp end of your needle and you're going to put it through his nose. You find where his nostril is and you just work it through the nose and you're going to clear it out. Once you have the nostril cavity cleared out, you take your tie wrap. You insert it into his nostril. You will take the short end and lay it flat. You will take your wire leader and center it as best you can on his beak. The long end you will bring to the front and you are going to start wrapping backwards towards his head. What this is going to do is this is going to sew his mouth shut. You want to get your wraps as tight as you can. Don't worry if the first few don't go around his mouth. They will back up and bind up and sew his mouth shut. And there you have it. Now your Balahoo's mouth is sewn shut. It will not come undone. Good to go. Double hook tandem setup. This is the way you should fish with a ballyhoo. So at this point, you can decide whether or not you want to troll them naked just like this or top it with some sort of skirt of any color. You can use pink and white, dolphin colored, or blue and white, whatever you feel like using or whatever the fish are feeding on. Or what I like to do is I like to top it with an Islander. This is an Islander. World famous lure. The next thing we're gonna do to top the ballyhoo with the Islander is we will take, again, the kinked end of our wire leader and we're going to send it through the eye of the lure. Once you feel it come through the, uh, the nose of your lure, you simply take it and you pull it out. Then you will take your Islander and it's got a wide, your Islander has a wide hole which will fit right over where you have sewn his mouth shut. You drape it back, and you're ready to fire it up. You can actually lock your Islander in place and center the eye where it's supposed to be so that your fish trolls straight up and down. And then you're good to go. That is a deadly combination right there. I would troll for wahoo, for dolphin, kingfish, tuna, anything. This particular setup, because of the wire leader, is pretty much made to target 
toothy critters such as wahoo and kingfish. If you're going more for dolphin, I would go on ahead and rig my ballyhoo with monofilament using the same application and the same lure setup. But that's how this is done. Now, in order to fasten it to your line, you will have to cut off the little kink at the end and you will have to tie another haywire twist and attach it to the snap swivel, which is on the main line of your reel. Then you're good to go. That is how this is done. So that is how you rig a ballyhoo with double hook tandem setup. Once you've done it a couple of times, it'll be second nature. You won't even think about what you're doing anymore. And you'll go to town and every ballyhoo that you rig will have this set up. In the rigging, I used two 8 hooks. You have to gauge the hook size by the ballyhoo size that you catch. If you catch smaller ballyhoo, you won't be able to use 8 hooks. You might have to drop it down to 6 O's or 5 O's. Regardless of the size of the ballyhoo, I would always go with the double hook tandem setup for them. If you get a fish that nips off the tail, he will get the bottom end of the second hook. If he inhales the whole thing, he's going to get gagged with two hooks in his mouth and it's going to be a great hookup. After you have them all rigged, it's time to store them. In order to avoid freezer burn on your bait, I like to pack them in vacuum seal food saver bags in packs of three. So this is what a pack of three looks like after it's been sealed in the food saver bag. Now all you have to do, throw it in your freezer to preserve it until you're ready to go out trolling. When you hit the water, you'll have one of the most popular baits used for trolling in the southern region of Florida. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. I hope you enjoy. And I hope you learned how to rig ballyhoo with a double hook tandem setup. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.